In this video, we're going to discuss how to set exposure using the ProLost Flat picture style on Canon EOS DSLR cameras. Now before we get into the specifics on how to set exposure, we want to talk about a little bit about how to, how to set ProLost Flat on your camera. So ProLost Flat, or what's commonly referred to as ProLost, the ProLost Flat picture style, is uh, you go into your picture styles on your camera and you start uh, with uh, typically I do a user defined one and I set it to the neutral picture style from there I turn my my sharpness all the way over to the left turn it off all the way I also do the same thing for contrast I turn it all the way over to the left all the way I then set my saturation two clicks to the left and that setting is what is commonly referred to as the ProLost Flat picture style. You can Google ProLost Flat. Uh, ProLost.com is a, a blog run by Stu Masterwitz. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. If not, and you're watching this, Stu, sorry. Uh, but uh, at any rate, he goes into a, a great bit of detail on the ProLost Flat picture style. This raises a lot of questions that a lot of people have. Uh, about how to set exposure when you have ProLost Flat because it's not quite the same as uh, setting exposure um, when you are shooting with the standard picture style. So a lot of this, what I'm talking about now, goes into how, how to set exposure using this ProLost Flat picture style. So other tools that you will need to set up in order to use and properly set exposure for ProLost Flat is on your camera, uh, it has a histogram display. Now typically most Canon DSLR cameras, unless it's really, really old, you can do an RGB histogram display or a luminance histogram display. I strongly recommend, at least if you're shooting video, to set your histogram to luminance histogram. This does mean you have to have your white balance right on and set correctly, which is setting white balance is subject for another post but in the here and the now, assuming you have your white balance set correctly, you can safely use the luminance histogram. When you look closely at the luminance histogram, what you'll notice, and I'll provide a close-up of this, what you'll notice on your luminance histogram is all the way over here on the left, if you pull this video into Premiere Pro, that is effectively zero IRE. And all the way over here on the right, that is 100 IRE. All Canon DSLR, uh, EOS DSLR cameras that shoot video shoot full range video. And if you pull this footage into Premiere Pro and look at the Lumetri Luminance uh, uh, waveform display, what you see showing up here at zero is in fact zero IRE. And what you see showing up here is in fact 100 IRE. Uh, if you look closely at the histogram display, you'll notice there's a line and the histogram is actually broken up into five zones. This is part of uh, what I somewhat refer to as, as a bit of a zone system. You know, flush tones should roughly be in the middle zone. <laughs> if, if you don't have any other exposure tools, you should try to get your flush tones roughly in the middle zone. In each of those zones, the first zone on the left is 0 IRE to 20 IRE. The next zone up is 20 IRE to 40 IRE. The next zone up is 40 IRE to 60 IRE. And the next zone up is 60 IRE to 80 IRE. And then the next zone up is 80 IRE to 100 IRE. And how that works out, particularly if you're shooting with ProLost Flat, is your middle zone is, is your, is your mid-tones. Your zone, one zone to the left, of your middle zone is your shadow detail. One zone to the right is your highlight detail. And then you have uh, the far left zone is what's commonly referred to as super blacks and the far right zone is what's commonly referred to as super whites. So when you're going to set your exposure, uh, this histogram, the luminance histogram that you see does actually, it's not quite the same as having a waveform display, but it does give you a really good idea of where your exposure is. Almost all scenes are gonna have some amount of white and some amount of black or grays. So using that, 
This does let you set your exposure accurately, assuming you have other tools that you can accurately use, which we'll get into now. So one tool that I strongly recommend that you have to set exposure is an 18% gray card. Now there are tons of different styles and exposure setting tools. There's a DSC waveform cards where you can put it on, assuming you have a waveform and it shows a little X and all that other stuff. You typically, if you're shooting on a Canon DSLR, don't need anything more than an 18% gray card, which is also handy for stills shooting. Um, in addition to that, most 18% gray cards, at least this one, this is a Menon 18% gray card. It, on the back side, is 92% reflective white, which you can use to set your white balance. So this is very, very handy. If you don't have one of these gray cards, you can still set exposure using Pro Lost Flat using a white sheet of paper. This is just a white sheet of copy paper. I fold it in half so it's a little bit stiffer so I can hold it up and you can also use this to reliably set your exposure. Now, if you're using your gray card, how you set your exposure is very simple. You set your lights up the way you need to have them set up. So, for example, here in my office, my lighting is set up. It's, a, it's kind of a standardized setup where it's largely top lit. There's not a lot of light coming from anywhere else. Um, I do have a light right up here in the corner, which you can see. Um, a little bit uh, in the corner uh, lighting the wall but and that does provide a little bit of light here on this side of my head but other than that this is a fairly standard uh, overhead lighting setup and so what you want to do is take your gray card stick it where your faces are going to be or where your flesh tones are going to be and uh, look at your histogram you should see a spike right at the 40 percent mark and that's how you set your exposure using an 18% gray card. Don't angle it up or do anything like that. Just face it at the camera, just like that. And then set the exposure controls on your camera so that this spike, the spike created by this card, sits right on that line between the 20%, you know, the uh, 0 to 20% and the 20 to, and the 40 to 60% zones, it should sit right there on that line. That's 40% or 40 IRE and that is where an 18% gray card with Pro Lost Flat should sit is approximately 40%. Now, you don't always have an 18% gray card, especially if you're out running and gunning. You know, uh, you, you typically, especially, particularly like with me where I vlog a lot and I just have my camera, right? Uh, you know, carrying a gray card around is really, really difficult to do and then go and set your exposure up and all that other stuff. That's very difficult uh, to do. It's really hard to carry this gray card around. So one of the things that you can do that also works very well is it's a lot easier and a white sheet of copy paper let me put that down there a white sheet of copy paper is also very common I have a folded up white sheet of copy paper in all of the places that I normally shoot in and uh, it's very simple to simply hold up this white sheet of copy paper and also reliably set exposure using this as well and how you do that is this white sheet of copy paper, if you hold it like this, should sit at the 70% mark on your histogram using Pro Lost Flat. It'll be in a different place if you're using the standard picture profile, but on Pro Lost Flat, this white sheet of paper, reflected white, okay, not angled up to get maximum because that's more like specular highlights just a, a plain reflected white like this you should hold it up like this and it should sit right in the middle of that 40 to 60 percent zone okay now depending on how reflective your sheet of paper is some whites are less reflective than other whites on a 92 percent reflective surface like on my gray card this 92 percent reflective surface when you go and stick that on here like this that sits right at the 70% mark. 
Okay, on this sheet of paper, it's just below that. It's still close enough to 70% that you can reliably put this on 70%, and it'll be within a quarter of a stop, more than close enough uh, for exposure. That's how you set exposure on Pro Lost Flat. Now, where does this put skin tones? Well, that's an interesting question. Skin tones are really hard to judge. Uh, because skin is, you know, lots of different colors. Uh, typically, like for my skin, the way it is now, uh, my skin tone, if I were to look at this on the histogram, I would be topping out right at 60%. And that's my skin tone, is 40 to 60%. I, my face, as it is now, when I look on the histogram, s literally sits right there in the middle zone. And you generally, for most Caucasians that are not super pasty white, that's generally where you want to set it. Uh, I would strongly recommend for women, do not exceed 70%. So if they're albino white, you want to set it to where they are sitting basically right at the roughly 70% mark with Pro Lost Flat. Same as a white sheet of paper, or maybe a little bit below that. At any rate, that leaves you with a very usable picture. You do still need to color grade it because it's meant to be color graded, which is the subject for another post. Before we get too far into this, one thing that we do want to do is come up with a way to verify that these settings are correct. And there is a very good way to verify that these settings are, in fact, correct. It's called using the zone system, or the Sunny 16 rule. And the Sunny 16 rule basically says that in the middle of the day, during full sunlight, you set your aperture to f16 and your shutter speed to the reciprocal of whatever ISO you're shooting at. So, for example, f16, ISO 100, and 1 100th of a second shutter. If you do that and shut your camera up, you can take this 18% gray card or a white sheet of paper and expose it and look at the histogram and lo and behold this 18 percent gray card shows up right at the 40 percent mark and this white sheet of paper will show up right at the 70 percent mark and so that's how you verify whether or not your settings for your camera are correct you gotta have a sunny day to do it but that's how you do it